GVZ1 here in today's video I'm going to show you guys my sentry build with Urban MTR and with Medved Shotgun. If you don't have those exotic weapons you can just go with SVD Sniper and with SASG Shotgun. There is two types of build I'm going to show you guys. The first one is with a group build and the second one is the solo build. For solo, this is a good setup with their chest piece and rehabilitated mask, and of course a 4th century. Then, if you don't have a bear chest piece, the best choice to pick is the specialized backpack. Because this one gives you a lot of skill power. You don't have to put on thing, or you can go with nimble. It's really up to you. And this is a very good setup if you're in a group, especially with the healer on your group. I still recommend having a healer in your group to make it really work. And first, you need a vigorous chest piece. This is a really important one because without vigorous chest piece, you're not going to get overhealed from your healer. And then the second one, since you're a pure DPS, you're going to go with Savage Glove. And then, of course, four piece sentry. It's either up to you if you want to go with 5 firearms, but I still recommend putting at least 1 stamina to survive a little bit longer for more damage. You can go up to like half a million damage if you add another firearms right here. Since you're using it for like mid and long range weapon, I don't think you need more stamina, but it's really up to you. And if they go near and just wreck them with SASG or... If you have a medved, medved is a really good choice also. So I'm going to start with the group build. Vigorous chest piece is the beginning one. I suggest you have health since you're putting more towards the firearms and then exotic damage resilience so you can just counter all those, those explosive like grenades, those seekers and stuff like that. So I still recommend putting exotic damage resilience over uh, enemy armor damage. As you can see, this is the only sentry mask I have. I have no choice to use this one, but I still recommend putting enemy armor damage over critical chance because your damage is based on pure damage. You're not going to rely on critical chance, but if you do manage to put a critical chance on it, that's a big bonus for your damage. But I do suggest if you want to go with pure DPS, go all everything on firearms since you have a healer with you, keeping you alive all the time. And the minor attributes you must have a burn resistance on it so you won't get one shot by those air seeker mine air burst seeker mine build. And this is my knee pads. The knee pads you must have a health on it because you are again you are leaning towards firearms build. And then for the minor attributes you must have like shock resistance and burn resistance. Bleed is an optional. But it's really up to you, you want to add those things in there for extra resistance. And for the backpack, stability is also good. So you want to just rapidly shoot your weapon without worrying about the recoil. But again, it's really up to you if you want to put more health. I still prefer having stability over health on this backpack over here. And for minor attributes, I still suggest having burn resistance over ammo capacity on it. And this the gloves you want to wear is a savage gloves because this one gives you a critical hit chance by 7%. It's not many people use cover during combat, right? So this is a really good choice if you want to be a pure DPS because there's no other high ends in there besides the niches to give you some extra damage. Since you're like lacking on critical chance in this, on this build, this is a good choice for it. And then the major attributes I pick is a assault rifle because that's going to be my main weapon. And then enemy armor damage and critical chance. But again, it can change the enemy armor damage to the critical damage. It's really up to you. I have no choice to pick this one. It's because I came up with this one. But again, it's really, it's really up to you what choice you can make. Either way, they're both good. 
and this is the holster I'm using. The reason why I pick reload speed is because I cannot get a critical chance like this one has. Because this is a 1.5 item. I don't think I haven't found a 1.6 holster. For now, I'll stick with reload speed. Till then, I'll get a critical chance instead once I found my 1.6 holster, a sentry one. Now let's go over to the solo build setup. First one's the chest. As you can see, I'm going with the health and exotic damage resilience. You can change the exotic damage resilience to skill haste, but I still prefer having exotic damage resilience. And for the mask, since you're solo, you have to rely on the status effect. Especially when people throwing a lot of stuff at you, like grenades, some shock turrets, some fire. So every time you get bleed, fire, or on shock, you'll get some nice healing. That's why the reason why I'm using the rehabilitated mask. For major attributes, I still recommend putting exotic damage resilience so you won't get one shot from those secret mine users. And for minor attributes, make sure you have burn resistance. And let's move on to my knee pads. The knee pads I'm using a major attribute is health. The reason why is because I'm so. You can also change that into a skill power. Which one you preferred. It's either way, they're both good the same way. But to get that skill power, make sure you find that 1.6 sentry knee pads. And for my inner attributes, make sure you have shock resistance, burn resistance, and a bleed resistance. Bleed resistance is just an optional, like I said in the group one. It's really up to you if you want to put those three together. It's a really good combination. If you don't have a better chess piece, this is you must have, especially his backpack. Because every time you stack on firearms and stamina, it gives you a skill power. It's close to equivalent having a one electronics in gear. So instead of like having two firearms and two stamina and one electronics, you can just go all out with three firearms and two stamina and one specialized backpack. You will get the same result. Kinda. But for the major attributes, you can put the skill power instead because you don't want to put a lot of on toughness. You want to lean towards more skill power so you can survive longer when you use your heal. And then for minor attributes, I still suggest you have burn resistance on it. And then my gloves, the same thing as the one in the group. There's nothing much I can say about it. But this set of the Savage Glove, my major attributes on this one is enemy armor damage, assault rifle, and critical chance. Everything's good. It's really up to you which ones you choose from. You can even go with skill haste on this one. You can replace the enemy armor damage with skill haste. Or you can just replace the assault rifle with skill haste. Or you can just change it with critical damage. Again, it's really up to you. Uh, thing. It's, this is my choice and I'll stick with it. Since I'm solo on this build, I still prefer having skill haste over reload speed. Since no one's healing me and you have to rely on your ability to survive. That's why skill haste is very important to make your cooldown really short. And all my mods is going to be a stamina skill haze on this build. You can put more stamina and health on it since you're just going to do more DPS. But just in case like your healer died, it will give you a little bit of backup heal for yourself if you manage to use a first aid on your build. And then if you want to add it with first aid self heal, but it's really up to you which kind of mod or performance mod you choose from. For me, I choose first aid self heal. That's, that's the only one I have. And this is going to be your main weapon. If you don't have a urban MDR, you can just use a SVSD. It can work out either way, but urban MDR is the top choice for this build. Because it's assault rifle that gives you insane amount of uh, enemy armor damage increase. 
but it's really stability is the best part about this one. And then the talent you must choose is destructive and brutal. Again, it's really up to you which one you choose from, but make sure you have brutal because this is going to be your main damage is in the head. And then the talents I'm using on this build is with headshot damage, of course, the highest as possible with critical chance and critical damage. The muzzle with, of course, the highest headshot damage, critical chance and critical damage. This one, you can go optimal range. You don't really need to have a critical damage on this one. You can put like stability and stuff like that. It's really up to you. Because you're not going to crit much in this build. But if you do crit, it gives you some nice bonus. But I'll stick with this critical damage for now. Since I, I'll tell I found a better under barrel. And extended magazine, critical chance, rate of fire, of course, magazine size. And then your secondary weapon is a shotgun. If you don't have a med bed, you can use this SASG. You can craft a uh, 163 if it's going to go with the thing in the last stand because it will go to 256 once you enter the last stand. But yeah, med bed is really good. It's really powerful. And the times I'm using from it is responsive. The one in the middle, I have no choice. I'll stick with this one. Until I found a better one. But the best combination is responsive and destructive for it. Or you can go with responsive and brutal. If you're really good at doing headshot, you can go with brutal anytime, any day. But yeah, this is my choice. It's responsive and I'll pick destructive because I'm not very good at aiming the head. But I'll just go rapidly shoot it in the chest. And a talent I'm using on the weapon mods I'm using on this medbed is critical chance. And a, of course this thing. Critical chance uh, thing. You can put rate of fire too. It's really up to you. Maybe I did I should put rate of fire here. Yeah, rate of fire will be good here. I saw in my urban MDR. I have a better one, but I'll stick with that one for now. Like I said, if you don't have a, a med, you can use SASG. I don't have it on right here. And the skill abilities you want to choose is a booster shot or you can go with overdose. But again, it's really up to you which one you choose from. I like using a booster shot. Just give me some extra damage boost by 15%. Sometimes I use pulse, the tactical scanner. But sometimes, if you solo, you just want to just like burn them while you can just shoot them with shotgun, right? It's again, it's really up to you. And if you're in a group with a good healer, you don't you don't really need this one. You can go with booster shot for extra damage, increase your thing, your damage, and you can go with a sticky bomb and make sure it's disruptor. Since you're a pure DPS, you don't want them to use any skill. Just disrupt them. It really can really work out, or you can just use a shock. Grenade, uh, shock turret or a fire turret but then again if you're gonna use those turrets make sure you have at least like for the fire turret you must have a wildfire on it if you decide to go with shock turret you'll go with fear tactics instead just replace your wildfire and replace it with fear tactics again you need this bottle body if you're in a group because if you go down, your healer can revive you easily and you get this 30% buff, including for your healer and for yourself, right? It's really good. If you're in a group, that is. And then you don't need critical save because you have a healer again. You must have a combat medic though. It's really good for combination and then again, it's really up to you but for extra damage, you best pick for precision. Again, this is a good build for if you're in a group. You can just replace this with on the move. Since you're pure DPS, you're gonna kill a lot of players. You can get on the move on the spot. But if you're solo, this is a good build. I suggest to work on it. Since you're not gonna use a pulse, put precision on it. You don't need this one. 
You don't need this one if you're solo. You go with critical save and strike back. This is a good setup if for solo players. Critical save, strike back, position, and on the move. You can replace on the move if you're using a turret. Just like that. Or if you're using a pulse, you don't need that and switch it to on the move. Again, there's a lot of different situations. It's easy. It doesn't matter which one you like, man. Just pick whatever works out for you. Well, that's all for this build. Hope you guys found this video useful for your future and present build. More builds to come. And this is JBZ1. This is me saying goodbye.